place where Twisted Image doesn't touch it. So uh, if, if Spell Sky is going to be disruptive against Infect, it's more likely to be the case with Affinity bringing it in than any other deck. Sure, sure. Well, both these players are going to take a look at their opening hands here. Devin Eckert will be on the play. Affinity, in fact, two decks that have been dominant this weekend here in Cincinnati. You know, for a while there, I think a Grand Prix Charlotte, where Grixis was kind of a dominant force that weekend. Various forms, Patrick Chapin's form with uh, four copies of Cryptic Command and Grixis Twin and all that stuff, and that was really the deck to be. Colagon's Command, all that power. It's weird, we don't even really see much of that this weekend. I think the, the meta game has gotten a little bit too fast, and I think that a lot of these decks, the, the blue decks are only justifiable if Cryptic Command and Mana Leak and cards like that, Remand, are, are very powerful. And the way these games are playing out, I mean, Cryptic Command is just too slow. These decks are too redundant for things like Mana Leak. And I think that's putting a little, a, a real crimp on the blue decks in the metagame right now. Verdant Catacombs is where Tyler Hill is going to start. You saw Iker get off to a pretty quick start with a Signal Pest and Ornithopter and an Ink Moth Nexus. So we'll see what land Tyler wants to search up. He'll go with the Breeding Pool, as most Infect players do to start the game. Down to 17, he'll go. And it's going to be a Glistener Elf. Eckert will untap. He'll take a draw step here. He's got to get off to a fast start. Galvanic Blast in hand right now. Looks like a lot of red cards here for Devin. Yeah, this is a hand that really needs a Mox Opal. Yeah. He's got the Aether Grid in hand. Very powerful card. If he's got the Opal, this hand's spectacular. Yes. He gets a fast Aether Grid and can also cast Galvanic Blast along the way. But if he's stuck without red mana, this hand doesn't do a whole lot. Well, there is a Signal Pest. There's the Opal. That's the big one. Galvanic Blast will take care of that. And the leftovers in Eckert's hand right now are Aether Grid and Blood Moon. Those it's are a good real leftovers. good set of cards. Yeah. There's the Moth Nexus. Here's another Glistener Elf. But if Eckert's able to draw a land here, the Aether Grid might end the game on the spot. The Blood Moon also might end the game on the spot. Yeah. Eckerd doesn't look like a drill land. Maybe another copy of Mox Opal, and that's okay. He just has to decide which one he wants to lead with. This is the complicated, yeah. complicated part of this. That's a dismember. He'll take care of Signal Pest. Tyler Hill with two copies of Forest in the deck. So Blood Moon is not quite a lock, but it's still very, very good. Yeah, he actually just drew a land, so this is getting a little bit easier. You know, now Blood Moon, of course, is going to shut off his Nexus, both Ink Moth and Blink Moth, but that's, Hill, that's fine. Yeah, you're, you're fine with that exchange because casting spells is pretty tough unless he actually drew a basic forest. Might change the way he fetches for the next game. Here comes Glistener Elf. I'm going to block with Ornithopter. That'll get a counter on it. There's a Wooded Foothills. That's a mountain. Pass the turn back. Might be time for a little gridlock. Love it. Springleaf Trump is where it'll start. Now, in order for him to use the Springleaf Drum, he's actually got to tap a creature to use it. Yeah. So he's not going to be able to actually... There we go. He's got to be able to do that. So I think a bit of a misstep there. The Drum isn't free like he thought it was because now he can't actually activate the grid. Yeah, because his bottleneck is creatures. Yeah. So there's your hang-up there. Here comes Glistener Elf. Again, not a lot to fear here. You don't have to worry about crazy pump spells. Yeah, one copy of Mutagenic Growth in the list. Everything else requires green mana. Yep, not too concerned. There's a Memnite. That's a freebie for the grid. Pass the turn back. Here's an attack. I'm playing this one pretty safe. And now the grid will take care of the Glistener Elf. And now you can fire away for one point of damage up to Tyler Hill and then get a little, more, get a little aggressive with these creatures. Yep. Yeah. Start activating the Nexus if you want to. Oh, there will be no Nexus activations. Oh, excuse me, Blood Moon. Blood Moon is here. 
That said, I like an attack. Signal Pest will pump up the jam there on Memnite. The follow-up is a Vault Scourge. Now he's got two pings set up. Yep. And Tyler's at nine, so we'll be going to game three in just a moment. Yeah, soon enough, this is, this is a player that's locked out. And if you've, you know, we haven't really seen very many Blood Moon games here in modern uh, this weekend or many others but this is what it's like this is like this is something that affinity used to go to yeah three mana one of which is red is not the easiest thing for the deck to produce but another signal pass another ink moth nexus drawn tyler hill you get a couple more draw steps i think just that was actually his last one because we're going to finish things off here take a draw shoot you finish it well you got to finish him off with the grid yeah come on Attacking, kind of lame. Finishing off the grid, very nice. Devin Ecker going to win game number two here over Tyler Hill. Affinity, in fact, getting ready to go to game number three. We'll take a look at those sideboards again for these players. And the reason for that, we get an idea of actually what Devin brought in. You know, we know the Aether Grid's there. We have to imagine the Spell Skites are there. And we know that the Blood Moons are there. And probably Whip Flare, maybe Wear Tear. I like Whip Flare fine. I think Wear Tear is a little too narrow for this matchup. Okay. Eckert's not uh, particularly concerned with... Uh, Ink Moth Nexus. He has his own copies along with Blink Moth Nexus and other incidental flyers. So okay. I don't think it's worth going through those kind of hoops to answer Ink Moth Nexus. But I think the Whip Flares, the Aether Grids, the Blood Moons, the Spell Skites, they're all in. Those are all pretty good options as far as Tyler Hill's sideboard is concerned. Two Relic Progenitus, the Spell Skite, the Corruptor, the Spell Pierce, the Two Twisted Images, Wall of Roots hanging out on the board along with the Wild Defiance, a Dismember, Hercules Recall, and three Nature's Claims. So I think you're going to see the Hercules Recall certainly come in alongside the three copies of Nature's Claim. Two copies of Twisted Image, good answer to Signal Pest and Spell Sky, especially, and the Viridian Corruptor. Very good against a deck with a bunch of artifacts in it. Yeah. I think it can be a swingy matchup. Play draw dependent is what it feels like, though for Hill, he just got ran out that game. Uh, the, the issue is in the post-board games, Eckerd with, with Gearpar, Aether Grid, and Blood Moon, does bring some cards to the table that can end the game on the spot. That's something he's lacking in the first game. And as such, he's forced to just sort of race. And Tyler Hill's Infect deck is going to race much better than Affinity on average, especially when Tyler's on the play. Post-board, if Ecker can slow the game down, make it a little sloppy, which Affinity's pretty good at doing, can flood the board, then things like Gearpar, Aether Grid, or Blood Moon can steal the game. Well, these players are going to shuffle up here. It'll be Tyler Hill on the play. He'll take a look at his opening hand. I don't want to make it this simple, but it might be all about Blighted Agent. Well, Tyler does have some artifact removal in the deck. So he can use Glistener Elf and, and Ink Bond to some, of, uh, to some effect, but I agree with you, Blighted Agent is the, is the key there. The problem is, Post-board, Blade Agent gets a little bit worse because it's a slower threat, and you're playing against Gear Pod Aether Grid. So if you're too slow, that card can bury you. You're playing against a grid, you're playing against Whip Flare that may have come in. Right. Yeah. Galvanic Blast, we know is a main deck card, even though there are only two copies. Breeding Pool is where Hill will start. Let's see how explosive of a start Eckerd has here. Step one is Ornithopter. How about another? Glimmer Void. Springleaf Drum, Signal Pest, pretty explosive. Red cards in hand too, by the way. A clock, a removal spell. It's a good mixture of cards. Can't ask for too much more. Mm, thought about sacrificing Wooded Foothills. Maybe not. And he will sacrifice Wooded Foothills now. I think it's very important for Tyler to take this opportunity to go get a forest if he can afford to do it. And he just did. Do not want to get just colded by Blood Moon again. Yeah, Eckert's threatening it next turn. Now there's Blighted Agent. That's the big one. However, Eckert does have a copy of Galvanic Blast in hand ready for the unblockable threat. Arcbound Ravager in hand here for Devin as well. I don't think you want to get too cute if you can avoid it. Here come the beatdowns for two because of the signal past the battle cry trigger. Now there is the Galvanic Blast. 
and go back to Tyler Hill. We'll see if he's got another infect threat. Picked up a copy of Gataxian Probe. The problem is that it kind of has to be blooded agent. Yeah. Because Eckert is producing a sea of blockers. The upshot is at least Tyler has a copy of Apostle's Blessing in hand. So if Eckert's on nothing but artifacts, there's a route to sneak through lethal. But he's going to probably get just one shot at it. Well, this is definitely something. It's an Etch Champion, a Galvanic Blast, and an Arcbound Ravager. Viridian Corruptor, the draw there for Hill. I'm going to play a copy of Ink Moth Nexus, but you saw that he actually paid for the Gataxian Probe, so he can't even play something like Corruptor this turn. Yeah, Corruptor was the one three-mana spell that, that punishes him in that spot. Looks like Gear Power Aethergrid was the draw here for record. Let's see what's next here for Devin. He's working on a shortage of mana. You can feel he kind of wants to leave up that, uh, that Galvanic Blast. Doesn't really want to commit to Ravager at this point. But his clock is so slow mm -hmm. if he's just chipping in for two a turn here. And he can't even really do that anymore. Because he's just going to come in for one this turn. I like trying to get Ravager on the battlefield. Speed up the clock a little bit. You do leave yourself open, but, you know, how open? I like Eckert taking that spot to speed things up, though. I think you have to. I don't think you can ship away for two points of damage and hope it's going to be good. Kind of play this control game. You take the opportunity, speed up your clock a little bit, then maybe you can turtle back up. Yep. And there's, no even, there's not even a guarantee he has to turtle back up. Tyler Hill being asked to make a play here. The problem is now with, with Ravager in play, Viridian Corruptor is just a much less effective tool. Yep. The only real route that he can take with this is kill the, uh, the drum. That's really the only unique piece of the puzzle that Eckert has in play. Try to pin him on mana and hope to overwhelm him. He's going to go after the Ravager. We're going to see where the plus one, plus one counter goes. I'm just going to put it on a signal test. Pass the turn back. A girdle draw. Picked up another copy of Ornithopter. And we know what's in his hand. Got an Aether Grid. Galvanic Blast. Got some powerful red cards for the matchup. He's going to give the beatdowns here. So three points total. Follow up as an Ornithopter. Just pass the turn back. Can't forget about the Etch Champion over there in Devin's hand as well. Though there's not much he can do with it at this point. But now Tyler gets to start mounting some amount of an offense here. On top of that, he has Blighted Agent in hand. Which means that even if Eckert slows things down and starts chump blocking, he can just go with Noble Hierarch in hand plus the Blighted Agent. He also has a copy of Apostle's Blessing in hand, so mm -hmm. he has protection. Or in the event that the Alpha Strike becomes juicy to do with Corruptor because of the way the math works out, he has that line of play as well. There's Noble Hierarch. Here's an attack with an Exalted Trigger. Things are getting a touch interesting here. Does Eckert want to maybe cash in this Galvanic Blast? Remember, he only plays two. This line of play, if he doesn't use it here, becomes pretty rough if Tyler plays the Blight Agent post-combat. Because I think he's trying to sit on this Galvanic Blast for as long as possible uh, to try to trip Tyler up into a spot where he's using a pump spell. 
Uh, it looks like, okay, there we go. Eckerd's going to take the three, in fact, and now there's Blighted Agent. And the problem is now that Devin's hand's going to be forced because he can no longer block the Blighted Agent, or the, the infect threat, rather, mm -hmm. wait for Tyler to play something, and then use the Galvanic Blast. I am positive if Eckerd knew that Tyler was going to play a Blighted Agent post combat, he would have chumped the Corruptor this turn. He would not have taken that hit. Eckerd's very unsure about how he wants to use this removal spell. Gonna go after Blighted Agent. That's gonna bite the dust. But now you look at the math here. You got three coming across from the Corruptor with an Exalted Trigger. Mm -hmm. Three that Eckerd already took. Apostle's Blessing plus a four pump spell is lethal. Groundswell. Yeah. Might of Old Crozier. Become immense is more than enough. Here come the beatdowns again. Whip Flare was the draw. Well, you got to give that Corruptor protection. I would think. He does have Ink Moth Nexus back there. And I think that Eckert should have probably waited to see what the outcome of this whip player was going to be before making any attacks. Because now his shields are down. Yep. And it's possible that if Tyler had, let's say, uses Apostle's Blessing, saves one of his creatures, he would have again wanted to chump block with Ornithopter this turn. He's just trying to figure out how he wants to use the Blessing, if he's going to use it at all. And he actually has Groundswell in hand. So I think this is going to be... This should be lethal, yeah. I'm count two for the Corruptor, a Nexus he can activate. Yeah. Two, uh, two Nexus he can activate, plus a Ground Swells. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. As long as he doesn't miss it, this should be lethal. Sacrifice the fetch land. He's moving a little bit quicker now. Yeah, I, I think that Devin needed to play this Whip Flare first and yeah. see what happened. It would definitely... If that happens where Apostle's Blessing saves the Corruptor and Ornithopter probably doesn't come in, Maybe so, nothing comes holds in. Holds back something. Yeah. Nature's claimed the draw for the turn. Going to fire both copies of Ink Moth Nexus. Here's a Groundswell. It's been triggered with Landfall. And that is going to do it. Tyler Hill is going to win this match here over Devin Eckerd. Two games to one. Infect takes down Affinity. And we're going to have an all-Infect mirror. Should be over very fast. Probably will be.